rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Let us go before the throne of God's grace first. Father God, in the name of King Jesus the Christ, we come humbly before your throne of grace, just thanking you for who you are, dear Heavenly Father. You have many names, and you fulfill those names perfectly. And we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your superiority. And we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you are our Lord and Savior through your only begotten Son, King Jesus the Christ, in whom you are well pleased. And now, Lord, we invite you and the Holy Spirit to be, dwell among us, dear Heavenly Father, whereas we, dear Heavenly Father, will be filled with your Holy Spirit. And so, Father God, we know, dear Heavenly Father, that when we seek you in your will for our daily living, dear Heavenly Father, you says we are to seek you and, and we are to uh, depend on you and we are to do all that we can in giving you glory. In the name of King Jesus Christ, we pray. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would put me on the decrease and you be on the increase, dear Heavenly Father, and speaking through these lips of clay. In the name of King Jesus Christ, we pray. Let us all say amen. Let us all say amen again. Our lesson this morning for uh, today, today is uh, the October the 22nd, and of course it's like uh, uh, co-pastors uh, Patrice said earlier, you know, these weeks and days, they go by fast. Am I right? They come and they go, and this is getting closer to the rapture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? And so, therefore, we need to be expecting him to come at any time. And we are to be living a life representing him and his kingdom in the meantime. Am I right about it? Okay, so this lesson is entitled, Israel Rejects God as King. Israel Rejects God as King. And this lesson text is uh, 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 2 and the 10th chapter, verses 17 through 26, and the related scripture is 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter, verses 6 through uh, 22, and also the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 13, and first, also 1 Kings, the first chapter, uh, verse 32 through 40, and Luke, uh, finally, uh, the fourth chapter, uh, verse 17 through 32. And the time is uh, about 1050 B.C. And the places is Gibeah, Gibeah and Mizah. The uh, golden text reads as this. Ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations, and ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. First Samuel, the 10th chapter, and the 19th verse. Let us go to our scripture lesson, and we will read uh, responsibly. Amen. And beginning with the, uh, 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter, first, verse 1, it says, Now there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zerah, the son of Bechoneth, the son of Aphra, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord, to Mizar, and said, and to Mizar. 
And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. Verse 21, when he had caused the tribes of Benjamin to come near by their families, the, the families of Matri was uh, taken, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Verse 23, and they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulder and upward. Verse 25, then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it up before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house, all. And Saul went home to Bibia and there went him. To, and the heart was... Amen, amen, amen. Now we find out that uh, some of the history of Samuel, Samuel had a mother, and of course his, her name was Hannah. Her name was Hannah. And uh, she was barren. Hannah was barren. She could not have children. So uh, she desired having a child. And so therefore, uh, she prayed to the Lord. She went to the temple and prayed to the Lord. And of course, the priest saw her as she was praying, and she was moving her lips as she was praying. And so, therefore, the priest thought that Hannah had been uh, drinking, had, was drunk. And so, therefore, uh, uh, she, uh, the priest didn't realize that Hannah was serious she, when she went before the Lord and his throne and uh, petitioned to him that she desired having a child. And so we know that there is nothing impossible to our Lord and Savior. Am I right about it? And so therefore, uh, God did bless her with a child. And uh, that child was named Samuel. And so Samuel, uh, uh, the mother gave Samuel back to the Lord. And Samuel lived in the temple with the priest. And the name of that priest was Eli. Eli was the, 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 the priest's name. And so, therefore, he taught Samuel as he was growing up uh, how he was to fulfill his role as one of God's own. Amen? And so, therefore, uh, that's uh, a short history of our Lord uh, Samuel through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, uh, today's aim is, the fact is, to introduce Saul and review the circumstances that surrounded his selection as the first king of Israel and the principle to to teach that despite folly of men folly meaning a lack of good sense or a tragically foolish action or conduct or lewd behavior that's the uh, the definition of the word folly and God's uh, sovereignty prevailed the application uh, to encourage Christians to yield to God's will instead of insisting on their own will. Amen? And so therefore, we know that God's will is the best will for us. Am I right about it? Our will is like dung, as uh, Paul would uh, uh, 
described. Amen. And so therefore, uh, God is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life that we are to live. Am I right about it? And, and if we try to live our own life apart from him, then we're living our life in vain. Am I right about it? And so the introduction of this lesson, it says Israel request for a king was granted. But there were lessons yet to be learned about God's way being the best way. Amen. Now, I know each of you have uh, uh, lived your past life and you are into your present life and then you got to live your future life. Am I right about it? And so therefore, we are to depend on our Lord and Savior to live that life now that we've come into the knowledge of him. Amen. Because he is the way. Amen. Amen. Now developing this lesson here, it says, uh, the, the first outline here says, Saul's return, uh, which is coming from Sam, 1 Samuel the ninth chapter, verses 1 and 2, it says, the only fact known about any of Saul's ancestors is that his father, Kish, was a man of power and substance, and substance. So he had a lot going for him, amen? And so therefore, uh, we have to realize that when you have good leadership above you, you definitely have to follow that leadership, especially when it is all by our Lord and Savior. Am I right about it? Because definitely it's, you, it's going to be rewarding to you as you continue to live your life, your personal lives. Amen. And living a life representing our Lord and Savior and his kingdom. Amen. And uh, it also says uh, that uh, uh, note the uh, descriptive words used of Kish son. And uh, it's talking about uh, uh, Samuel. It's saying... Uh, in verse 2, uh, he was a fine physical, now we're talking about Saul. Uh, he was a fine physical specimen who stood head and shoulder above his peers. And so that just tells you that this, this was a handsome man, okay? This was a handsome man. Sometimes, you know, we look for uh, that which is on the outside. That, that, you know, if it looks good to the, if it appeals to you, you know, that's what you want to accept, you know, to, to, to uh, follow the leadership of or to be a part of. Am I right about it? But you know something? Uh, don't look at the book and, and, and judge it by the cover, it, it's, as, as this, it's been a said, you know, it, in, in past times and everything. So everything that looked good is, isn't necessarily good for you. Am I right about it? And so therefore, uh, Saul, he was a definitely a handsome man. He stood tall over everybody else. And so the people desired having a king. They rejected our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that you, now you have created mankind. And of course, today, if we bring in that today, you know how uh, uh, mankind is trusting in man rather than in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Am I right? You know, just because our Lord and Savior hasn't revealed himself physically, you know, we want, you know, uh, we, here we are, we are Gentiles, and then the Jews, Jewish people also, you know, they want to uh, uh, follow someone that is in the physical realm, you see? Uh, when it comes to politics and all that, you know, uh, you, you want to follow the politicians rather than following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because the politicians are only here temporarily. Amen? They're only here temporarily. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is uh, eternal. He is eternal. So that's who we have to follow. If, and if we, if we are expecting to live with him eternally, we have to seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto us. Amen? And so whatever it is, you know, when it comes to our concerns in every area of our life, we are to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Amen? And so therefore, he said he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. He's a rewarder. Don't you want to be rewarded 
by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you have to seek him and you have to be obedient to his instructions. That's what you have to do. And so obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Amen. Amen. So the next outline, it says Samuel rebukes. And uh, this is 1 Samuel, uh, the 10th chapter and the 17th through the uh, 19th verse. And so it also says here that uh, uh, Samuel, uh, Saul, he was shy. He was, he, he, discovered by, he was discovered by Samuel and installed as Israel's first king. It was now time to call the people together. Okay, so now Samuel, uh, now, now the people uh, was the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tri tribes of Israel. And these were the people that uh, desired having a, a, a king, you know, other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, therefore, uh, we must realize that uh, it was time now to, uh, for the people to come together and find out who that king would be. So Samuel spoke as a mouthpiece of God through Samuel God reminded his people that it was he who had delivered them from Egypt and other uh, enemies. And I, I think right now, you know, we know that uh, uh, the Israelites right now is in, in, a, in a, a period of war. Am I right about it? Now, when God's people uh, turn their back on God, you know what? He punished them. He, he allows the enemy to take over his people, rule over his people, just like in Egypt. Am I right about it? And so, therefore, when we are disobedient uh, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he will allow the consequences to come upon you. You see? We have to keep our spiritual eyes focused on him. We have to keep our uh, attention uh, daily, all during the day, focused on him. Are we behaving uh, and representing him as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Are we treating others with love and kindness? I mean, this, this is, and, and, and so the word of God teaches us that King Jesus the Christ is King of kings and he is Lord of lords, amen? So all those that are professed to be kings here on earth and everything, he's above all them. You see, they all got to die. <laughs> they, all, they, they don't have a king. They don't have a kingdom, you know. Only there's one true and living uh, Savior, and that's King Jesus the Christ, who can uh, 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 allow you to come up, become a part of his kingdom uh, eternally. Amen? And so, therefore, there's going to be much reward for his people. I mean, if you just hold fast, hold fast your faith, it's all about your faith and your walk with him. It's all about your relationship with him. We have to definitely examine ourselves. Are we truly following after our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Are we truly uh, representing him before uh, other Gentiles that are living apart from him? Am I right about it? And so therefore, man, you got to be on fire, you know, for the Lord to really use you the way he pleased, it will please him. You see, and so therefore, uh, I'm so glad that I can stand here before you right now and, and testify that the Lord is good. He's good all the time. And so therefore, I, 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 it's not what I've heard others say. I'm telling you about my personal relationship with him. That's why we need to examine ourselves in our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because one day, we got to stand before him at the judgment and give an account of the deeds done in these physical bodies that he has loaned to us. And for the young people, I know there are so many distractions out there in this world. And, that, and Satan is the god of this world. But you know something? It ain't about this world. This world is going to perish. It's going to end. And we see that it's, it's, it's approaching fastly. You know, the end right now. All, all these signs of the end times that are taking place. You, you see, don't take for granted that it's just happening somewhere else or it's just happening to, you know, a, a neighbor near you or whatever. Look here. Uh, these are signs of the end times. And you have to realize that God is, is sending his son 
Father God is sending his son for the second coming, the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The first was the birth. He took one a body and everything. But now he's coming back as king. He's coming back as king. He's always been king now, okay? But he's coming back as king. Amen. So I'm just so thankful that he has uh, transformed my mind. What about y'all mind? He has transformed my mind to be on the good foot. <laughs> to be on the good foot, you see, and, and, and be alert. Be alert at all times that he may crack the skies any time. No matter where in the world uh, 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 people may be, our Lord and Savior will be seen by them. Amen? Because he created everything and he's above everything. Amen? And so therefore he's omnipresent. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. Amen. Amen. So it says that uh, uh, Samuel spoke as the mouthpiece of God through, 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 through Samuel. God reminded his people that it was he who had enemies. He also communicated his disappointment that they had rejected him by demanding a king. Uh, man, that had to be hurtful. And you know something? Uh, we hurt the Lord, our, our Savior Jesus Christ, and some men are uh, during the course of each day. Did you know that? We hurt him some kind of way because we sin. You know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we have a sinful nature attached to this fleshly body. You see what I'm saying? And that's why we have to repent of our sins and, and, and to repent means to turn away from our sins. Am I right about it? And don't continue in that sin. And so therefore, uh, we have to always make sure that we are prayed up and that we are stayed up representing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, another outline, it says Saul reveals, uh, he, he's revealed. Okay, 1 Samuel, the 10th chapter, verses 20 through 26. It says... Uh, the, mag the magnitude of this great uh, gathering of tribes of Israel, apparently lots were cast to determine first the clan and then step by step, finally, to the man whom God had chosen to be king. S Samuel had already anointed Saul. The new king was uh, humble and shy, afraid to become the focus of attention. And so uh, definitely, you know, you just never can tell what a, a real shy person is thinking either, you know that? And so, <laughs> because, uh, you know, you can be hiding something, you know what I'm saying, in your heart. Your, your spiritual heart will be revealed as you express yourself. Am I right about it? And so uh, now Saul, he would maybe have been chosen by uh, God, but you know later on you'll find out that he was uh, uh, God. God said he had disappointed him. Saul disappointed him. So we are not perfect, and so therefore we're striving for perfection. Am I right about it? And so it also says that uh, he hid so well that it took divine revelations to show where he was. Uh, isn't that something? And so therefore, you know, why would you hide? Why would you hide? Are you, are you, are you afraid? You know, fear, fear will have you uh, uh, behaving like that. Fear, you know, hide, hide from reality. Am I right about it? And so maybe he thought, you know, he wasn't, uh, 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 good enough, you know, to, to be king. That, that, that could be it. You know, I, I don't know. I, I can't speak for Saul. But anyway, uh, we know that uh, when the Lord uh, gives us an assignment, you know, he, didn't give, he don't give you a spirit of fear. He gives you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen? And so, therefore, when you're depending on him to do his will, then he will uh, bless you to be bold about what the assignment is. Amen? And so, therefore, uh, I'm, I'm just telling you what I know because uh, 
Uh, I used to be very shy myself, amen? But look at me now. <laughs> look at me now. Uh, hey, look, at I'm, I'm up here before all of y'all because, you know, there's a transformation that has taken place. And I'm glad about it, amen? I'm glad about it. And so, therefore, you know, examine yourselves. Are you truly representing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the assignment that he has given to you individually because he has given you an assignment now that you have professed to be a believer. Amen? Amen. So therefore, uh, examine yourself. So it also says here in uh, uh, Samuel uh, is revealed. And so uh, to continue on, it says that Samuel declared that Saul was God's choice. And, and it says also, the people, however, wished to have a human king, a human king. They weren't satisfied with a spiritual king. They wanted a physical king, okay? Human, okay? And, and this is why our Lord and Savior took on a body, you know what I'm saying, to come down here and be an example of how we are to be followers of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? And so therefore, he went through some of the same things uh, of life that uh, we uh, have experienced, or going to experience. But there's victory through depending on him to get through whatever it is that the life issues may be, okay? And so therefore, uh, we're not to remain uh, uh, shy or anything like that, but we're to be bold soldiers for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And it also says here, the people, however, wish to have a human king. God complied or submit to their demands by following, allowing Saul to be their first king. Saul was shy and humble. He hid himself when he was finally discovered, he was presented to Israel as God's choice to be king. When everything was over, everyone, including Saul, went home to await future development. Amen. Amen. So the people had a satisfied mind once they found out that Saul was chosen to be their king. And so they thought a lot of him because of his physical uh, uh, appearance, <laughs> first of all, his physical appearance. And it said the choice and goodly, uh, although these terms can be used of uh, non-physical qualities, the rest of the verses makes it clear that there, that th here, there, uh, they, mean impressive, handsome, his uh, height, uh, close to seven feet tall, also was part of his physical appearance. Seven, seven feet tall. He, I mean, he was, he was overshadowing the rest of the people with his height and everything. So you're going to be noticed when you have that type of uh, physicality. And it says, uh, uh, now, we are Gentiles, right? We are Gentiles. And today, at some, uh, some of our Gentiles are placing a uh, man before God. Some of, some of the Gentiles, even they, they, they may have confessed, you know, uh, to be believers and followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but there are a lot of, of, of uh, Gentiles are trusting in the Lord. And that's a sad thing, isn't it? It's a sad thing. Because the word of God teaches us that we are not to put our trust in man, but we are to put our confidence in him. Am I right? And we are to put our confidence in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And so uh, to carry on here, it says uh, for the uh, practical points, it says uh, for the first, Im impressive physical qualities do not disqualify one from spiritual leadership, but neither do they guarantee spiritual success. Isn't that something? <laughs> that's, that's, it's a lot of truth in that. Am I right about it? And so therefore, we are to uh, adhere to what is being said here as far as these practical points. The second practical point is to reject the Lord's will 
is to reject the Lord himself. Isn't that something? And sometimes we do that uh, during the course of the day. Am I right about it? We think we know what's best. Uh, it may be a, a sudden decision or something like that, but that's how the enemy works too. He wants you to make a sudden decision, you know, so that you uh, will represent him rather than our Lord and Savior. Am I right about it? And so therefore we are regretful when we do that because the Holy Spirit will convict your spiritual heart that you have uh, rejected God's will for the will of yourself. Amen? And the enemy works with your, your physical uh, 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 self. And so therefore we got to remember that. The third is um, wise is the person who is not uh, overly eager to assume a position of power. Now we got number 45, right? I mean, oh man, he's doing some everything to get back in office. Am I right about it? And uh, you got people like that. You got congressmen, you got, uh, uh, you, you got people, uh, officials that's in our government that they're just eager to, 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 to be a part of whatever that position is so they can have self-gain or self-notoriety or whatever. You know, the people is the one that vote them in, but then once they're voted in, then, you know, it's all about them most of the time. Am I right about it? You only have a few. You only have a few that truly uh, represent the people that put them in office, that voted them in office. Amen. And so the, the fourth uh, practical point is, it is not a blessing but a curse when ungodly people get what they want. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And we, that, that holds true. Am I right about it? And so therefore, uh, we have to keep that in mind. Verse five, um, the, pra the fifth uh, practical point is, it says, we would have fewer regrets if we remembered that our decisions are being made before the Lord. Our decisions are being made before the Lord. You know, the word of God teaches us, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Am I right about it? And so therefore, you know, we have to pray that the Lord uh, 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 control our thought pattern, our, our thought pattern, whereas we can honor him. That's, that's what we have to do. Be prayerful that the Lord would do this on our behalf. And, and so therefore, uh, when he does, then give him the glory. And so when you give God the glory, you're giving him praise, thanksgiving for all that he does for you. Amen. And the sixth practical point is we should be thankful for the support of godly people, remembering that such support is a gift from God. Godly people. That's who I like to hang among. Godly people. Someone who is really, truly representing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because you know something? A tree is known by the fruit it bears. A tree is known by the fruit it bears. And so therefore, uh, the Holy Spirit will uh, give you unction of when there is a godly man or woman that in your presence. Am I right about it? And so therefore, uh, there's that kindred spirit there's that kindred spirit that the Lord will give you and, and, and confirming, confirming that this man or woman belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, also, uh, in, my, in, in, in summaring up this lesson here, I'd like uh, for Brother Joe to uh, uh, bring up John, the first chapter, verse 9 through 13. Amen, amen. And that says, that says, uh, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Which, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, 
nor of the will of man, but of God. Let us all say amen. Let us all say amen again. So uh, hopefully uh, you all have been fed uh, spiritually, uh, what, uh, giving you a synopsis of what the Word of God is, is teaching us. And uh, I look forward to continuing uh, in the near future. May the Lord bless each of you. Amen.